The following is a presentation of Seaside Community Baptist Church. Israel. Israel is a land where Jesus Christ really existed and it's a God's timepiece that um, God ordained. So if you look at the history of Israel, we have complete assurance of what the, our God is up to. Israel is divided into three regions <clears throat> during the time of Christ, the Northern Galilean region, the Southern Judean region, and the Middle Sumerian region. It was in this northern Galilean region, there was a town called Capernaum. Everybody say Capernaum. I just want to make sure that you're all awake this morning. Capernaum, roll your R's like an Indian. Burrito, you know, R's, roll your R's. Capernaum. You can do better, can't you? Let's do Capernaum. Because this name is going to retain, it will be imprinted in our memories this morning. So I want to talk about this town called Capernaum. This was a town which is situated, this was situated along the coast of the Sea of Galilee. There were 1,500, approximately 1,500 people living in this town of Capernaum during the time of Christ. This town existed from the second century BC to the seventh century AD. And this was known to be a fishing village. This was not a painting drawn by an artist during that time. But probably people imagined what would, that town would look like based on some facts from the scriptures. And they drew a painting of this town called Capernaum. It is basically a fishing village. But more important than that is the fact that Jesus Christ lived in Capernaum. Even though he grew up as a carpenter in the town of Nazareth, which was also in the Galilean region, he moved and lived in Capernaum. He did most of his ministry in this town called Capernaum. He walked on the shores of Galilee most of his life. The miracles, the teachings, the parables, and everything that he did was around this town of Capernaum. Not only was the dwelling place of Jesus Christ during his ministry years, this was also a place for the disciples. This is where Peter lived, Andrew lived, James lived, and John lived. They were fishermen in the town of Capernaum, and Jesus called the first disciples in this town. And this is a very important city in the Bible, in the Gospels. And uh, according to the tradition, according to the pilgrims, they have excavated and found the house where Peter lived. This is the house where the disciple Peter used to live, in the town of Capernaum. This city was important because it also had a tax office during the time of Christ, and the tax office was uh, taken care of by another disciple, and his name was, who was a tax collector in the Bible, Gospels, Matthew. Matthew also lived in Capernaum. Got four out of five disciples, I mean four, uh, five disciples living in Capernaum. Very important town. It was very important town during the time of Christ, and there was also a Roman garrison. The soldiers were stationed in this town. It was a very, very important town during the time of Christ. Not only was this town a popular fishing village, it also had something called the synagogue. A synagogue is a Jewish place of worship, and Jesus was heavily involved in this synagogue. And Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 20, 21 and 22, it says this, they went into Capernaum, this is talking about Jesus, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach. They were amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority, not as the scribes. It was a habit and a custom for Jesus Christ, whenever he was in the town of Capernaum, he entered the synagogue and he taught. Uh, the people there. Again, the archaeologists discovered the synagogue in which Christ actually taught. Believe it or not, this is the place that Jesus actually walked and taught the synagogue. They, were the, they, they excavated those walls and they were three feet tall on the east and the west and they found the western wall intact. And the wall is four feet thick. And this is where Jesus 
spent teaching. He did some incredible stuff in this synagogue in Capernaum. He cast out demon from a demoniac, which is in the scriptures, which is uh, recorded in Mark uh, chapter one again. This is the place where he healed the servant of a centurion. A centurion is a Roman soldier, and this servant was healed in the synagogue as well. It's recorded in Luke chapter seven. And this is also the place where Jesus taught about him being the bread of life. So certainly, this synagogue was important, and certainly, the town of Capernaum was important. Imagine out of all the places in this world, Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, he chose this town called Capernaum to do his ministry, to create history, to impact lives because of which we still sit here today. So my question for us is, this place of Capernaum, which was of tremendous significance during the time of Christ, now it lies in desolate ruins. Now it's not even seen, no traces of civilization, probably the couple of buildings here and there, but Capernaum does not exist anymore. Capernaum existed in Israel during the time of Christ, and the cities that were there during the time of Christ, like Jericho, the oldest city on the face of the planet, oldest dwelling city, is still there. Jerusalem is still there. And even Nazareth, which was a nobody's town, still exists. But what happened to Capernaum that it doesn't exist anymore? After all, the Lord walked on the shores of Galilee. After all, Jesus dwelt in this town of Capernaum, but it's not on the face of this planet anymore. Capernaum became history. Why did it become history? Let me show you, not to find the secret, we need to go to the scriptures in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 to 24. Jesus began to pronounce curses upon certain cities and towns. He said, woe, woe is this particular city, woe is this town, and let's see what the Bible says. <clears throat> then Jesus began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles had been performed. There are some clues in this passage Watch them carefully. Jesus began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were performed in you have been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the judgment day than for you. Then comes Capernaum. Watch this carefully. This is what Christ declared to Capernaum. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will, not, it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than you. Christ declared a heavy judgment on the town of Capernaum. And my friends, I began to study as to see what was the sin of Capernaum that God judged so severely, that Christ judged so severely. In fact, the scripture that you saw, he compares it to the town of Sodom, and he said it's better for Sodom than for Capernaum. So what did Sodom do? This is what the Bible says in Genesis 18. The Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see what they have done is as bad as the outcry has reached me. If not, I will know. The sin was so grievous that the Lord decided to destroy the city of Sodom. And Christ says it's more bearable for Sodom than compared to Capernaum. Then, my friends, I began to search the Gospels to see what is the sin of Capernaum. Believe it or not, I could not find any. I could not find sin which is grievous that the Lord was disappointed. I saw instances where this, uh, the Bible says that Capernaum saw the miracles of Jesus Christ. Capernaum heard the message of Jesus Christ. Capernaum did everything in order to recognize this man They knew who Jesus was very well. Capernaum was very familiar with Jesus Christ, but what was their sin? What was their sin that God was angry with Capernaum? The sin is the problem of indifference. The sin was a sin of indifference. 
They were familiar with Jesus Christ and yet didn't do anything about that person or his message or what he has done in history. What is indifference? Indifference is a state of feeling where you're aware of the facts but yet do not do anything about it. Indifference is not caused because of the lack of motivation. My friends, there might be situations in our lives where we feel, don't feel motivated and then you feel indifferent about it, that's okay. But indifference is totally different uh, compared to lack of motivation. Indifference means a person is totally aware of the circumstances, a person is totally aware of the message of, the, of Christ, a person is totally aware of what he has done, and a person is totally motivated by the message that he has done, but yet does not do anything about it, and that's what is called indifference. In churches to, today, in the similar atmosphere of Capernaum exists. We are educated with so much gospel. You know, in India, when I was a Christian, when somebody walked up to me and I had a bad day, when they used to say, Jesus loves you, you know what I used to do? I used to be so excited and say, what? Jesus loves me despite my sinful lifestyle? Jesus loves me enough that he cares for me despite my failures? And he used to excite me. The simplicity of the message was enough to sustain me. But today, when I say Jesus loves you, we are in a situation where we analyze and the intellectual Western society try to rip apart everything and say Jesus is the subject, loves is the verb, me is me, try to analyze everything and you lose the essence of the message. We lose the essence of who Christ is and we become indifferent. We listen to the truth and become indifferent. Slowly we become complacent. Slowly we become carried away in our regular routine. And life goes on. Churches, have we become like Capernaum? Seaside, are we on the path to become like Capernaum and build the attitude of indifference? Kitty Genovis, this is a lady, young woman in New York who was murdered in her apartment uh, in the early 19th century. This was a gruesome murder that was witnessed by 38 people from the neighboring apartments through their windows. The assault that happened upon her lasted 30 minutes long. They all saw, but believe it or not, nobody ever called the police. Nobody ever called the police. And this became an interesting story in the newspapers. It was all over the news. <clears throat> and then the cops began to ask these people who witnessed this murder, said, why didn't you call us? Why didn't you call us? And by the time they completed the rounds and interviewed all these 38 neighbors who were watching her die, they said, we thought that somebody else would call. We thought that somebody else would call. My friends, they didn't have the initiative to make that phone call to rescue the life of a young woman. You know what that is called? Indifference. Today, the world is dying. Today, the people are perishing. And what is the church doing? Just watching as people perish in eternity. You know what that is called? Indifference. Are we walking on the same path without having the burden for the lost? James 2.17 says, Thus also faith by itself, it does do if it does not have works, it is dead. Are we dead Christians? If we are dead Christians, we are meant to be in the graveyards because that's where they are dead silent. And we are the people who live for the living Lord. We need to be the noisy people. I'm not talking physically, I'm talking the spirit realm. You need to have a noise in your life which would impact lives. Are you living a life of indifference, my friends? Are you aware of what's going on with the neighbor? Somebody defined life this way. It says, first, I was dying to finish my high school and then start a college. Then I was dying to finish college and start working. Then I was dying to marry and have children. Then I was dying for my children to grow old enough so that I can go back to work. But then I was dying to retire. 
Now I'm truly dying. Suddenly I forgot, I realized, and I forgot that I realized to live. We live as if we are never going to die. We die as if we never lived. What is happening in our lives? Are we getting carried away by the systems of the world? Are we getting carried away with indifference? This morning I want to urge you, do not let this happen to you, my friends. Make your life count. Impact people. Impact people around you. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You may not say, Oh man, I became a Christian. I don't know whether I have anything to do. I don't know what I have to do. Did God have any other plans for me? My friends, this scripture is assuring enough that it says Jesus Christ has prepared for me some good works to do. God has already uh, developed a blueprint for your life. All you got to do is find out what it is and do it. That's pretty much it. Let's do it. So here is an example even as I conclude. Capernaum, the center for Jesus' ministry. It witnessed the mighty works of God, heard the messages of God, saw the tremendous miracles, heard Jesus in the synagogue, yet did nothing about it. We are educated beyond our obedience. We are educated beyond our obedience. You heard the truth, you know the scriptures, but yet we do not do anything about it, my friends. And be careful, time is coming where there is a possibility for you to become a relic, for you to become an antique, where an archeologist has to come and dig through to find you, to make you a specimen, to put it in the museum. Do you want to become one who just is there for a display even though it looks ugly? My friends, Capernaum needs to be an active town. This is where Jesus lived. This is where Jesus walked. Its destiny has been changed because of indifference. It was judged by God. What about you and me this morning? Are we still indifferent? There are some people here in two categories. Some people who think they are saved, but yet go to St. Patrick's Day to get drunk and do and act like the world. You know the truth. You call yourself saved, but you act indifferent. Be careful. You cannot play fool with God. Some people, they think that they're involved in ministry and they say, yeah, I'm a part of a church and that's good enough for me. But my friends, is there an indifference for your neighbor who is perishing? Is there an indifference for this world that is dying? You may not be able to change nations, but you can change some person in your workplace, share the good news, and rescue him from eternal damnation. Are you living a life of indifference? I ask this question myself, and many times I fall into the same trap. I become comfortable and complacent in ministry. I don't want to be one. And my friends, I want to encourage you very strongly. Don't wait for the archaeologist to come. Wait for God to come and change your life and see what he can do through your life.